we are refilled and we just left the fuel dock. Uh, Pietro is quickly busy putting the fenders back. I know all the words, I've heard them in many voices. I feel the wind in your eyes, I'm judging but disappointed. So we are on our way to Tunisia. And it's going to be a bumpy ride, I've heard and been watching Dorian very closely. Dorian wrecked the whole <laughs> east, coast of, east coast of the US and is now going for Greenland, then Iceland, then England and they say he's meeting up with another hurricane that's running now in the Atlantic and then it will come down to Africa so hopefully we will be through Gibraltar before that but I think we're going to get serious serious weather This is Captain Frick and his first mate, Pietro. We decided to chuck everything, leave the rat race and just embark on a new adventure. And that is our new home, Sisu. Join us on our epic journey as we sail the oceans, discovering new horizons, new cultures, new tastes, new flavors, new everything. It's just such a vast, vast world to explore out there. So please join us in our quest. Our own. decided to fly the big dog, the code D. And normally we will fly the code zero, which is an upwind sail. And then we discovered kind of like there's not a big difference between the code zero and the Genoa in terms of speed. So it was around 10 knots, 8 knots this morning when we decide we will do the code D instead of a code zero and then just run it as if it is a Genoa, just a very big Genoa, a big code zero. And the speed went up from around 3, 3.5 knots to around 6 to 6.3 knots of the same wind. So now this is a constant. We are doing excellent. We do most of the time more than 50% of true wind speed. So, <laughs> it is actually a very awesome view. We have the big Code D app. So it's a little bit difficult to, to look forward from the helm because of this big sail that's in the way. So 
So this is what I can see. And this is a nice thing also about this view. Not only do we have a nice uh, chart plotter here, a remote for the chart plotter, but look, we can also see the boats. Yes. That's a very, very big ship. And we can see it right here. We're doing around 7.7 .7 knots. Sometimes we're reaching 8 knots. Okay, up, right? Yeah, the angle about between 60 and 50. 50, 60, sometimes we go to 70. And in our favorite spot of the road. But not only the favorite spot, also the favorite food. <laughs> Tuna! That we... <laughs> okay, we bought this one. <laughs> This is doing around six knots now, and the sea is definitely the sea state is definitely picking up. Um, you can see long running waves now. The waves or the swells is much higher, but also much more defined. It's always nice if the wind is steady in a certain direction. If the wind is steady in a certain direction, then it's getting a definition like long waves and they're all from the same direction and they kind of like band together. The true wind speed is now 22, apparent wind is around 27 combined with our speed lock. It is crazy. The wind goes up all the way to 32 knots, true, true wind, and we're doing about 5 knots, we, we, we double reefed, we actually triple reefed on the head sail and the main sail we already got out far, far out, so the main sail is contributing a little bit to our speed, and the waves, <laughs> listen to the wind. It is, it's crazy, and the waves, we have these crashing waves, and I hit here, on the window here, and there's this airy moonlight at the outside, and it's like breaking waves, these white breaking waves that's coming over, and they don't break against the hull, they break against the saloon window. This has been a very, 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 very scary night for me. Um, I was on watch and thank goodness <laughs> Frank came and joined me. Uh, I think it's a storm, although well, it's not a storm, but jeez, but we've been experiencing. I'm sure it's that chicken bones that you give to Nipchen. <laughs> you should have given the whole chicken, not just a few bones. This is just a crazy ocean tonight. Uh, with winds going up to 34, 35, and the waves are, I think, about five meters. Uh. Yeah. And I come crashing over all the time. Yes, oh, and it's just so crazy trying to steer the boat into the wind to reduce speed, but then you go to 1.9 knots and then you know you can't go to, to a standstill. That's not going to work either. And the minute you push a couple of degrees left, then you go like a freaking bullet out of hell. <laughs> <laughs> and that you don't want either. No, it's so actually it's kind of like ramping Sisu over <laughs> these waves at one point. It's just been very scary. Yeah, comes another one. <laughs> wait, wait. Whoa. But she's right. up, 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 up. like a dream. 
And we, goodness, we've got the moon out, so at least we can see the sea state. Yeah, we can see, see the waves coming, which is sometimes more scared, I think. <laughs> and I do not, if it had been pitch black outside, that would have been even three times worse. But at least now we know we've been through it. <laughs> and to top it all, I was standing up here and I just heard this big bang onto the front. When, what's this? The window? Enclosure. Yeah. And I said, oh, my word, something else broke. Oh, <laughs> uh, friendly. Frick, 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 something broke, something One broke. One the lines snapped, or the sail wind, or something went crazy. <laughs> it was a lady flying bench. <laughs> <laughs> and I thought, oh, my goodness, it's my reef lines again. I, I put some shackles on, and the shackle just didn't last in this in this wing. And I look, I said, like, this shackle is... <laughs> it's moving, you know, it's like, okay, the wind is blowing quite a lot, and it's like, no, it's moving on its own, it's like bending, <laughs> it's like, ah, oh, flying fish. <laughs> and it's the captain's birthday, so, oh, yeah, show me, he's on duty now, I'm gonna, yeah, yeah. Eh? what a nice birthday Happy present birthday. was it, <laughs> uh, the sun is coming up, it was a rough night last night. I don't think any one of us actually slept. Peter is now down, trying to sleep. The waves was high there. And just to try and find in the dark the right path through the waves so that you don't slam. You, know, you don't come down with this crashing force and the rigging is just going. There the wind is going again, 25, 26. The whole night it was like this, but... <laughs> Now 25 for us is okay. <laughs> it's like kind of like, oh, we can relax. It's only 25. <laughs> it is. Yeah. So we are still reefed on the main, uh, on the head sail. Um, not as severe as at 32, 34 knots of wind. And the main is still at reef too. Um, so we normally reef the main at 20 and then at 30. But he decided we would keep the main at reef 2. So that we, uh, we don't need to get out there and do stuff, try to get the reefs in and making sure all the lines is good and stuff like that. So we just kept it at reef 2. And even on all the reefs on with 23 knots of wind we do eight knots and the sea is crazy the thick wind has four models a global forecasting system gfs and the european commission uh, forecasting system, forecasting model. So, and then predict wind derived two, one from the GF, GFS, and one from the, the sorry, <laughs> one from the EC. So, there's four models. Router two is from predict wind, based on two other models, and all four of them said that we will. Actually, at this moment, needed to start the motor. And we're doing nine knots. <laughs> On 23 knots of wind. And there the guys are saying, oh, with all the weather apps of today, you cannot find yourself in, in trouble. <laughs> Go sail, good. Go sail a bit. And then come back and tell the sailors those apps are perfect. <laughs> Even look where Dorian ended up. Yeah, uh, Fort Lauderdale dodged a bullet, but it ended up here just north of us. We left the Canaries eight days ago. Uh, a quite an eventful, exciting trip. And now we're approaching Spain, but we're going to go down to this 
straight to Gibraltar into the Met, then on our way to Turkey. Okay, they say when you cruise, there's no such thing as a race. But we've got a catamaran next to us, Mr. Captain. It's pretty good. If there's a, if there's two boats, it's a race. It's 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 just like that. But we were reefed because we were coming into uh, just out of the acceleration zone, and we picked up this boat, Odyssey, and it's a catamaran, 52 foot catamaran. We're only 45, but we decided we're going to take this challenge and see what we can do. Um, so race down mindfully, shake the reef, reef two, we were on reef two. And now we're doing seven knots, and he's doing, oh, there's a current against us now. So 6.5 knots, and he's doing 6.1. And now to beat him on his angle two. He already changed his angle to get a better angle. Uh, not like a mono into the wind, but bearing away from the wind. The beautiful cliffs on the coast of Spain. We are about four hours away from the Strait of Gibraltar. And we need to catch it before midnight to get the tides right. Mm. It is very good. Nothing like last night's leftover food for breakfast. <laughs> it works. And it was pork ribs done to perfection. It's so pork ribs, yes. <laughs> We're not sailing. Last night we came through, not really. We, we <laughs> our plan, was. intentions, <laughs> was to actually go right straight through the Strait of Gibraltar. But now we found ourselves in this cute little place. At anchor. Yeah, Tarif. Tarif, 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 Tarifa? I don't know. Big castle over here. Mm. Nice beach. Last night we didn't see any of this, but. <laughs> <laughs> Again at night. <laughs> yeah, and the reason why we stopped here, first, we were very tired. Um, we tried to make the current, uh, the basically eastbound current and so we have to be at high tide and we we didn't expect all the stuff that happened in was it a basin of Gibraltar mm -hmm. west of, of the Gibraltar Strait and then when we finally managed to get in it was just we were like two nights not sleeping mm. it was it just was, crazy. It was a lot so mm. when I got past here yeah, just as we had to come into that small 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 point the straight <laughs> I saw this little place next to us and I uh, and it looks like a nice pretty big beach nice holding ground for an anchor and it's like mm. <laughs> <laughs> <Very tempting. laughs> so we stopped because we also needed many many repairs mm. found found through to Gibraltar and they are full no place for a catamaran no place for a catamaran and the reason why we wanted to stop over is as you can see here <laughs> lots of lines. broken toys lines lines that this moment is just ropes so we had to replace some of them and some of them we can live out live without while at sea but some of them are just getting a little bit more critical and Kind of the thing that besides that we were very 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 tired and we and I decided no let's just stop anchor and take a good rest mm. because we already like what yeah it's like three ten days day, ten days at sea yeah. and and the last three wasn't good and the last three was just mm. crazy hectic so the winds here is very 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 tough <sighs> and a, and a sea state is. Yeah, that it's makes horrible. It, yeah, the wind is still okay, but the sea state, oh. It's horrible, it's you, horrible. you just, but anyway, so, this line is from our sail bag. It just, the wind just got hold of the sail bag and it just went off. So, that was the easy one to replace. This is our anchor ball line. <laughs> or, I don't know what it is, anchor ball line, yeah, yeah, yeah. so it's a line. Yeah. 
Also, just snap. Just if we didn't intentionally wanted to pollute the ocean because it was tied off on top of the trampoline. trampoline. On the top side of the room, it was nicely tied off, but somewhere during all of this crazy winds and bashing and, 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 and so on, it lost its footing, I would say. It didn't have any, it did have a, <laughs> a line attached, no? so yeah. it has a safety line, a clip on, what do you call this thing, a tender attached to it. So it was, but as a previous video that we talked about if that line just flip you just just overboard you will drown I'm sure of it oh, and our little orange ball just got so smashed it's not gonna drown, but it's gonna drift at forever. least you've got a very good safety mm. bubbly thing hopefully somebody will pick it up and use it yeah I think yeah. next time you will see it on a net <laughs> fishing net <laughs> so this is our dearest belated Mooring ball. Mooring ball. Like Not mooring ball, but ball. anchor ball. Anchor, anchor ball. indication ball. So that was that. Here, and that's kind of like the final straw. <laughs> yeah. That we did it was like this one, as you can see, the clutch stripped this one off and then you just stripped it right down to the side. So this is our Genoa. Genoa sheet line and it's just crazy it's just, it's just it's like and, and, and we were yeah. still within the limits no? yeah. it, but I think it's all the bashing and what we do is we and maybe that's the wrong part is that we this one is this part is now under the winch and this one is attached to the to the clue and then to save on the winch as well we relax the winch a little bit but we clutched it and I yeah, think, yeah, I think that was like it's always at the same exact same same spot. Mm. So the friction is always at the same 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 exact same spot. And then we wanted to reef the mainsail, and as we wanted to, we had to release the the, the the winch completely. And it was, I think, just the next bash, and this thing just go. I had to cut. This one was still keeping it, but because this was now in, in the, in the be, beside, on the other side, the wrong side of the jammer, we cannot use it anymore. And this one cannot, the clutch is not That's small enough to clutch, yeah. So we had to replace this while bashing around in the sea. So all we did was we tacked to the port side, uh, basically starboard uh, tack, so that we can release this one completely. But now the Genoa was on the starboard, uh, on the port side. And I can untie it and I can tie a new one. Luckily, Fortunately, as with everything, we have lots of space. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah. We have lots of extra line. Yeah, so we, we could replace that wall <laughs> underway, but we, we, we dropped the main. We, we tacked mm -hmm. and then we dropped the main. And um, so we could still sail and everything was still okay. Mm -hmm. yeah, so Just that it was good. like a little bit hectic. <laughs> um, but now the sail was very close to. What do you call it? The car, mm -hmm. no? the running car on the roof, and I could refix it. And then earlier, <laughs> like maybe four. It was like day two. Yeah, it was day two of the trip. We were in a in a very very windstill site, and basically almost like again in a high mm -hmm. pressure zone. And, and we so flew the Genoa, uh, the Code D, and it was working quite well. Yeah, it's um, perfect. No problems, and I think the swells also start picking up. And the swells, as we go up, the sail is taking a lot of tension for some, I think it's just the way it goes. Mm. So yeah, it goes up, it actually yeah, it like yeah. picks up some wind and then we actually could feel the boat going much faster. But it was still That's below, true. what, it was below 13, yeah, 13 knots. Slow, so. And then this snaps shackle on top broke. Just like that, you can see it broke. So the hinges is here and it is like a... It broke before the inch, so the inch didn't broke. It's actually the snap shackle, this one, that clip in here that broke. So, so this side here, and you can actually see it is very rusty. And I think that, that's a concern. Yeah, that is a concern now huh? uh, because that is old, old rust. So just a small piece of this shackle was actually holding the code D. 
So what is the model from now on? I will use a Bolin and not a shackle. <laughs> <laughs> so we had to rescue a sail from the water again. Yeah, so this That's anchorage, <laughs> this anchorage, yeah, the, yeah, we had to get the code D out of the water. That Before, was <laughs> yeah, we had to, the code zero the one time, yeah. and now the code D out the water. Yeah, yeah so it is crazy. Another line broke. This is our main sheet line. Port side, yeah. The port sheet line, main port sheet line. It got caught in a winch. But horribly. <laughs> when I do something, I do it good, even if it's a bugger up. <laughs> yeah, so, so we, and we were in the hectic place and it's, it's, we didn't want to risk putting this one because for us to drop the sail, we have to go into the wind and making sure that this, the, the, the boom, boom is loose. loose. And at that stage, we were, if we were going into the wind, it will be crazy because the wind was like, I think, four meters again, something yeah, like that. And it's very steep and it's very shallow, sh high frequency waves, short wavelengths. So if we were going to lose in the main, the, the sheet lines, both of them, so that the, the sail is pointing into the wind and loose and not powered up, we would surely broke this because you had to go through the jammers and we didn't want this to go through the jammers again. So every time when we were on a port tack, our main was not 100% out. It was a it was little bit sheeted in, mm. which actually creates more speed, but also more pressure on the, way, on, 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 the, on, on the main, on the rigging, right? Because of that, it was a risk. Yeah, so if we wanted to ease out the main completely, to depower it completely, then yeah. this would have gone through. And there's two spots, so it's double trouble. It would have gone through and then we would have have problem. And it's two weakened spots. So we had, all what we do, it was like this. And then we taped it up like this so it doesn't fray out more. And it, if we need to go in emergency through the clutch, we can do go through the clutch. And also the South Taylor and all of those things will work, so will, will still work. So we had to replace this one too. All we have to do is finish our food. And then we're going to have a little, little light on a braai and then we're going to eat the straight. And according to this, high water will be around... Four. The best time to go is three hours before high water. So high water is at 20 minutes to five. So if I look two. at the if I look at the tide, there's a little tide thing just close to um, Gibraltar, which is on the on the on the current side. So we will go just after two, maybe three o'clock. Three o'clock, we will lift anchor and then we go. So we repaired all the stuff that we need to repair. We slept enough. Now we're gonna see the straight in daytime. Hmm, that's a nice bonus. Yeah, that's what I was hoping for. Okay, a couple of days last, last, after, after the incident with the snap shackle that the code D fell in the water. It was all obviously not really bundled, but it was not properly put back into the bag. And now we are getting rid of the snap shackles, getting, making use of the good old bolens. So we have to raise this baby now without being fooled. So that's, that's going to be... <laughs> but fortunately, I think a parent is about five knots, so it should be okay. And we just start both the engines. We will go as fast, fast as possible. Raise it up so that we have got almost zero apparent wind because the wind is very, very light at this moment. So I think we will. We'll put up a GoPro and see. <laughs> the rest of you can see how we. How we do this? <laughs> okay, big mess on a front deck. <laughs> Luckily, a cat does have a big spicy in front. So what I try to do is first we, we secure it, and then we make sure that the the one edge where the 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 furler is is on the one side, and because the wind is coming from that side and we lift it up, all of this will go underneath. Hopefully. <laughs> That's now if all my 
physics is going to work out, calculations. So we secured it and we secured already the, the sheet line. So the sheet line is already going all the way back. Um, but it is just two turns. If we need to let go, we let go. And because so the main idea is we want to let it bowl out and then we will see what happens. So the next step is to secure the main alert and then game on. We managed to raise the big coat D, the bigger dog. <laughs> and the dog is flying quite well. I think the wind is busy changing, shifting again. Look at our view from the Leopard 45 front cockpit. <laughs> Just standing on its own, like just like that. The famous rock of Gibraltar. Hello Mediterranean. Here we come. Hello to Sisi. With profit, yeah. Yeah. Always one step ahead, but I can't see. the <laughs> 